have to fix. This is live TV, I suppose. Anyhow, having to fix the chair aside, uh, as we have just observed, uh, we're shifting. And we're currently shifting with my trusty cold trickle button. Now, why am I calling it the cold trickle button? Well, anyone that's watched Days of Thunder about you know, 500 times uh, will probably remember that line that Harry uh, said. And it went something like, now, Cole, when you shift the gear and that little needle on the tack goes into the red and reads 9,000 RPM, that's bad. Now, we don't have any safeguards here. We're presently not reading the turbine and output shaft speed sensors. So we could very easily cold trickle the hell out of this thing if it were in a car. And uh, that would be quite interesting uh, from a comedy perspective, but not so much for my gearbox. Um, so right, basically um, we're now at a stage where we have some software in the Arduino that is allowing us to perform shifts. Uh, we're doing that in a semi-automatic fashion, just with the two buttons uh, that would simulate a paddle shift uh, setup. So we will not be able to do fully automatic shifting until we get to a point where we're reading in the output shaft and turbine speed sensors. So that's going to be the next phase. Um, so presently we have, as I say, semi-automatic shifting functional. Now there is some, as you're probably able to see, some of the shifts were a lot smoother than the others. Uh, four to fifth and fifth to, to fourth are quite smooth uh, because I've managed to work out uh, the exact pressures to use on the pressure control valves. And I, I have managed to work out what values to send from the Arduino to the pressure control valves to determine how to make a smooth shift. First, second and third shifts need a bit more work because they, uh, they do it a little bit differently um, and this is where the whole overlap shifting thing comes into to play. So I have a new piece of info uh, which is very helpful. It comes from a manual for a range ro ro rover. And uh, I want to thank uh, somebody that pointed me in that direction. Um, because my chart that I had been using to determine um, which solenoids to switch and in what sequence to switch them was, let's say, a little bit incomplete. Um, and we would definitely have had components flying out the side of the gearbox casing if this had been driven hard. Um, several of the gear selections caused the gearbox to completely lock up. Um, just a torque converter slipping um, was the, the only thing that basically saved us from ringing something off here. That and the fact that those two car batteries uh, probably couldn't light a friggin LED at this stage but again that's kind of why I'm not using a big, a big string of cald grey cells um, in that if a load does come on this thing I want it to kind of bog down and I don't want it to um, twist something off on me. Um, I've had a few questions uh, just asked about the setup here. The main one has been some people expressing concern about the mounting of the motor to the adapter plate and so forth. As I did state before, and I stated again, this current setup will not be going in a car. Uh, this is purely for a bench testing arrangement with this motor. 
Uh, we have a new motor coming in, uh, should be here middle of January or so, uh, that we'll be then fitting to this gearbox uh, with a view to putting it in the car. So yeah, that's about where we're at. Uh, we have uh, shifting operating semi-automatically, not as smooth as it really should be, but we're getting there. Um, Additionally to having the shifting operating properly, um, I have gotten the controller to now read the temperature sensor in the gearbox. So we can now read the fluid temperature. Uh, it turns out to be a PTC sensor, not an NTC as I had originally suspected. And again, the Range Rover ma manual had some uh, points of data on that, so I was able to then write a little bit of software to translate that into a actual meaningful temperature. Um, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to just uh, show the display on the controller as we're going through the gears, and that'll be us then. Um, so yeah, let's do that and uh, come back to it. Okay, so as you can see on our LCD screen, uh, we currently have a readout of where the selector is, um, what the current oil temp and the gear selection when we're in drive. Presently the software will always select first gear uh, when we select drive. We can, how, how, however, change that, um, which might be beneficial um, from a EV perspective. So, let's fire up in neutral. <laughs> Here comes drive, and we're in first gear, so here comes second gear. There's second and third gear. Fourth gear. Downshift, fourth, third, nice bounce there going into the third, second, and first. So now if we uh, shift into neutral on the selector. on the selector and we're in reverse and back to neutral as you can see our oil temperature is increasing um, as we're warming things up in there so we can go back to the drive one more time Manually then on the selector, drop to neutral, and go back to drive, we go back to first gear automatically. So that's about where we're at folks. So that is about where we're at. Folks.
Oops. We are uh, working on it. And uh, we think you all posted. So I'm going to be, as I said, making a section on the EDBMW webpage uh, where I'll be posting information on this project and uh, posting up the Arduino code and some uh, diagrams and so forth. If anybody wants to get involved in it, then please do so. So stay with us and uh, we'll be back soon with some more fun facts. Cold trickle style updates. Thanks for watching.